let's go to lesson number nine. Lesson number nine. So here is the deal. Assuming now that you have, you know, given them the gospel, they've received that, called on him to save them. Sometimes it's awkward to know what to do now. You know, all right, well, great. You're my brother in Christ. See ya. <laughs> and you leave, right? I am terrible. I'm getting better now, but I'm terrible about getting their names, making sure it got written down so we can come back and visit them so that I can be praying for them. I can remember all these things. I'm terrible about, uh, here's something that I, I forget a lot. Uh, and actually it was Brother Stevie uh, was out and, uh, and he kind of gave me this idea. I'd never heard this before. But he says that what he does, if he leads someone to the Lord and he has a feeling that there's other people in the house, he'll say something like, is there anyone else in your house that needs to hear this message? And he did that one time and, and, and they said, yeah, you know what? I want my kids to hear this. Brought their kids to him and he went through it all again, <laughs> got them saved. But sometimes I feel like after I went some with the Lord, like, all right, I, hard day's work, I'm done, right? <laughs> and, I'm, and my mind's like shutting off. No, no, you're not done. Keep going, right? Uh, now, it could be that you've been there for a long time, and sometimes they really do have something they need to do, but they, they wanted to listen, and you've kept them as long as you can, you know, so you've got to try to break the conversation. Uh, if you're just observant and you pay attention to what they're saying and what they're doing, you can pretty much know if that's the case, okay? But you're like, well, what are we going to, what, what are we going to do now? You know, how do we, how do we, you know, we caught the fish, now how are we going to clean it? How are we going to get it prepared? How are we going to do that? Well, some of that's just going to be up be between them and God, you know. Somebody said, you know, you catch the fish and God cleans them, right? Well, we do have a little bit of a responsibility, but, uh, but there, here's, here, here's my plan, okay? Here's our plan that we want to follow here at Iola Baptist Temple. Uh, I think it says this somewhere in the notes, but we want to make sure everybody that we lead to the Lord gets a follow-up packet, okay? We're going to send that to them in the mail. And I'll talk more about that in a second. Then we want to make sure they also get a physical, uh, personal visit, right? Saying, you know, um, praise the Lord. I heard you got saved, you know, and let me just encourage you. Did you get that packet in the mail? You know, and let me encourage you about some of those things. Talk about baptism or whatever. There are things we want to want them to do to be able to grow. Remember in the Great Commission, Matthew 28, uh, 19, Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. So what he was telling them to do, to go into the world, what we call the Great Commission, was actually threefold, right? It was preach the gospel. That's how they're going to get saved. After they're saved, baptize them. Right? That's kind of a way of them identifying with Christ and uh, making it public for others to see. And then, uh, and then teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So we're wanting to teach them the Bible. We're wanting to help them to grow. We're wanting to get them uh, part of the church body. And, and, uh, and, and we need them and they need us kind of a thing. Okay, so what we want to do again and be thinking about this. When you're at the door, and if you see somebody, you're able to lead them to the Lord, uh, be thinking about this. Okay, we're going to send them a follow-up packet. We're going to pay them another visit. So you might say, hey, can I just get some information from you? Can I make sure I get your address right? Uh, maybe even their phone number. What I usually do when I go soul winning is I'll have a, a bunch of cards that we take, even the invitations or the tracks. And then I'll also have another card where you can write uh, down if... You know, maybe not. Maybe they didn't get saved, but maybe they're Christians and they don't have a church home. And you want to go back, uh, visit them, or send them something. You know, get you. You, you know, the, there's always going to be things that you need to write down, and that's a good thing for the silent partner to do too. But uh, so before you leave the house, what I'm saying is try to get some of that contact information. Okay, so a follow-up packet. Here's what we got so far. Lord willing, one day we'll be a little fancier, have some nicer quality stuff, but we're gonna do. Uh, what we can with what we got, and I think this is sufficient. This works, okay? So we got a bunch of these envelopes here, and the idea is to send this to everybody. And on that next page, 
in your workbook, I've listed all the items that we have in these packets, okay? So, first of all, we want them to have this letter. It's a letter from the pastor. That's your blank there, a letter from the pastor. Okay, I thought it'd be nice. If they're going to go to the church, they might want to know a little bit about the pastor of the church. And so here's a, a letter that I wrote to him. Uh, unfortunately, it's generic. We thought about typing their names in, uh, but uh, it's going to be easier right now, I think, to make it a little more generic and have a bunch of them ready. But um, uh, just says the basics. You know, your friends at Isle Baptist Temple rejoice with you and, and uh, talks about some of the stuff in this packet and just as encourages them, gives them the information of the church and everything. Once again, the second thing is our invitation. Now, these packets I have made up are for the work in, in uh, Kansas City, but we are also making packets uh, with the Iola information. We already have a lot of that, but I'm just, this is the one that I had prepared. So we also want to put in here the invitation slash gospel track. All right. Now, they should already have one, right, because you were at their door and you gave it to them, but they may have lost it. And it could be that they really have to be refreshed and reminded on this. You know, I'm not, that doesn't mean necessarily that they're not saved, you know, if, they, if they're not remembering all these things. Uh, and cer certainly we know that there are times where somebody made a profession and, and really didn't get it. And they just led us to believe that they did. We know that happens. So it could be that they'll read this again. We've already preached, planted the seed. Maybe this time they'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember he said that. And maybe this time it'll be, you know, the real deal. Or maybe it was real. Maybe they were, um, they did get saved, just like a little kid gets saved, and they don't know how to lead their friends to the Lord because uh, it's just, you know, it's just not natural for them. So this helps them to be able to re read that again, you know. Another thing is somebody in the family, hey, who's that from? Oh, it's from this church, Iola Baptist Temple. Yeah, I remember talking to that guy the other day. Maybe that's an opportunity for them to take their first effort at winning someone to the Lord. <laughs> yeah, he was telling me about how I, you know, you don't have to do works to go to heaven. You just trust in Jesus Christ and, you know, who knows? So we want to make sure they have that. We put that in the packet. All right. Then the next thing is, like I said, what we want to get them to do is take the next step. So somebody gets saved. What's the next step? Baptism. Okay. So I gave them this pamphlet on baptism. And I've taken the information in here. This is just a, a pamphlet that I wrote on baptism. And I've taken that and made a video out of the, basically the same material uh, on here. And I put that video online. Okay. And so, but some people like to read, take their time and really soak it in. They would read this maybe. And, and it explains to them the importance of baptism. Maybe clears up some misconceptions that they have on baptism. A lot of people have been conf confused because of the Catholic teachings or, or some of the Protestant teachings that put an emphasis on baptism for salvation. This explains that that's not the case. Uh, then the next blank there, a pamphlet on the importance of church. You know, what about church membership? Why is it important to go to church? Again, I took all this information and made a video on this. It's on our website. As soon as they pull up our website, it's on the front page. They can, they can see these. Uh, but this is something they can have in their hand, you know, and uh, begin to start reading on some of that stuff. <clears throat> okay, speaking of the videos on our website, so I also made a, a little business card with the information of the church, again, times of the services, they can hold on to that. But then it shows them here that on YouTube I've got those videos, and it, and it gives the, the title of the video so they can look those up and see them real easily. Uh, are you sure you'll go to heaven when you die? They can watch that again, refresh their memory. Uh, what doth hinder you to be baptized? And what is church and why is it necessary? Those are three videos they can watch, get them started. Okay, get the first. But hopefully they'll watch that last one, what is church, why is it necessary? And they'll say, man, I need to be under the preaching of the word. And so they'll come and hear a whole lot more preaching. And uh, originally I th we thought about providing them with some sermons, you know, uh, of preachers that we trust, preachers that we like. And, uh, and that's good. But as the pastor, I don't know if I can endorse everything that these people are saying, listen to. There's a lot of great preachers I love listening to, but I don't, I don't, I'm not there to walk them through everything. 
right? So all I know is as a pastor, uh, I'm obviously going to approve of the things that I preach. And sometimes years later, I go back and wish I could take some of those things back. <laughs> right? So I'm just doing the best I can to make sure they're fed and edified. And so it's, in, it's just inviting them to come. And here, here's just some, uh, you know, some samples. But then, Lord willing, I'll continue to put some of our preaching services online as well. They can look at that. From then the then the. What point do we explain that we're, we accept only uh, preaching from a King James Bible? Because that's a great question. Have, they have a Bible, but they have something. Right, right. Seat, you know? That's a great question. On the video that. Uh, and the video that we made that'll be part of this this whole uh, series here on the video we made it at the very end brother josh says and nick's his silent partner in the video and again they're just role playing right but but this is the stuff they do at the door regularly and he said brother nick anything you want to add to that all right brother austin just got saved and so there's anything you want to add to that and he says yeah uh and i think justin maybe had just said something already about the Bible and uh, and brother brother Nick says yeah you need to get you a King James Bible because there's a lot of confusion out there so he begins to explain that a little bit okay and uh, that's uh, it is a good thing to say hey do you have a Bible now I'll say this back there we have uh, that little table there has a lot of our soul winning stuff okay and on the bottom shelf uh, we've got free Bibles all right I was able to order those Super cheap. I think they're like, I think they might even be less than $2 a piece. You Bibles in bulk, well, that might be maybe $2. They're probably like $2 a piece. And uh, we give those out when somebody gets saved. Now, sometimes I don't have them on me, but if I've got them in the, in the car, I give it to them. And if they say, oh, I already have a Bible, I say, why don't you take this one? This is a King James Bible. You know, and, and I do believe that's important, you know, because there's a lot of, uh, uh, we call them perversions. <laughs> there's a lot of corrupted versions out there that, you know, they might, as a whole, you might look at it and say, well, that's not that bad. But it just takes a little bit of poison, right, to, to kill somebody. <laughs> you know, we don't want, we want them to have the pure word of God. So very good point. Look at the next one. That's what I'm actually going to cover. Here is something that we put in the packet as well. This is a coupon. Now, they don't really need a coupon, okay? We'll give them a Bible. <laughs> but here's a coupon for a free Bible, free King James Bible. That's your blank there's Bible. And so, yes, so they have to bring the coupon to church, all right? And now if we gave them a Bible at the door, one of those $2 Bibles, and they come to church, here's what it says on there. Uh, on the letter, it says, Our gift to you. Please note that in this packet, there's also a coupon for a free Bible. If we already provided you with a Bible, use this coupon to upgrade to a nicer Bible. Okay, so instead of that paperback, we'll give them, you know, we got some extra Bibles as well that are nicer. And so, <clears throat> so that is the plan. And, you know, I remember what uh, Brother Collins did, and, and I think he got this from his dad, is if he saw somebody started coming, a lot of times kids would come and they'd have NIVs or something that they gave him. And he would, he would say, hey, what's that Bible? Hey, I'll give you a nicer Bible. You want to trade? <laughs> and he would take their Bible and give. Now, the reason I didn't do that is because a lot of times with kids, maybe grandma bought them that Bible or their mom bought them that Bible. I don't want them to get in trouble. So I'll give them the other Bible and say, hey, this is what we use here. So, And it's funny. That kids are so excited about that, you know. And, and we've led people to the Lord uh, many times, and they say, I went out and I got a King James Bible. I mean, you, they don't even have, it, have to have any training. It's just like, this guy led me to the Lord. He had a King James Bible. I want a King James Bible. That just, a lot of times, it just, it's pretty simple. And then when they come, you know, and start hearing the preaching, then they'll start, they'll start picking up some of those reasons why we think it's important. So very good question. So, uh, so that's it. That's the things that are in this packet. I already gave you the blanks to the bottom, baptizing and teaching. Uh, there's a lot more than just leading them to the Lord. Now, leading to the Lord is the main is the main thing we want to do, but but uh, we do want them to. Yeah, I'm gonna give you that last one here. So the plan is, our goal is to send these packets out every month, every month. Okay, so. Uh, I think we've mentioned that a little bit. Uh, it's kind of a ministry opportunity. Um, 
it could be that once a month we'll just put something in the bulletin or whatever saying, you know, anybody that wants to get, or maybe somebody will take that on as a personal ministry. And once a month we'll have these, you know, mail them. Unfortunately, just this little bit of weight takes two stamps, yeah. two, three stamps actually, like two stamps and a five cent stamp. But that's okay. We'll have all that and somebody can stuff these and put the stamps on them and, and label them. Uh, make sure they got all those in. Not like this packet, which for some reason had two of everything. But, <laughs> <clears throat> all right, so the goal is to send those out once a month to everybody that's, that's gotten saved that month. Isn't it a blessing though? I remember at one quarterly business meeting, we had, I think, two people saved for that whole quarter. And I said, praise the Lord, two people got saved. I said, but I sure want to see two a week, you know, rather than two a quarter. You know, and I thought, I thought that was asking a lot. See, two people saved every week, and the Lord has allowed us to go way beyond that now. You know, on average, I can't even say how many. On average, what would you you, you record it? About four people a week on average. So, what a blessing! What a blessing! Okay, so last page, last page. So we want everybody to receive a follow-up packet. Then we want them to also receive a personal visit, okay? And our plan is that, <coughs> yeah, those are blanks, packet and visit. Our plan is that they'll get all those, and then after that, we feel like it's up to that individual to get into church, all right? Um, I realize it's not necessarily going to happen. There are some people get saved. You know, I always think about the 10 lepers, you know, Nine of them went on their merry way, rejoicing that Jesus had saved them, healed them. But then one of them came back and gave thanks and probably became a disciple and followed, followed him is what I would guess. But the other nine, he said, I, didn't I cleanse ten of you? Only one of you came back. Where are the other nine? Right? That's the reality of it. If you win ten people to the Lord, you're, you know, you're thankful if you get one of them to come to church. And uh, we got to be... Careful, number one, not to just judge and say, well, they're not saved if we don't see them in church. But at the same time, we have to also uh, do what we can to get them into church without just spending a whole lot of extra unnecessary effort. I'm going to talk about that in the next point. So when they do visit the church, however, so, you know, you give them the packet, uh, you visit them one time. Hopefully by then they'll say, okay, you know, I ought to just go check it out one time. <laughs> when they finally do come into church, we're probably going to make a visit just to say, hey, good to have you in church. I hope you come back, you know. So that's now three contacts that, they, that you've made with an individual, you know, so supposing that they come to church. Now maybe they come visit one time and then they never come back. That happens all the time. You know, don't get upset about it. I try not to take it personal as the pastor. <laughs> all right. That's just the reality of it. They might come out of obligation or maybe just a genuine interest and then never come back. Well, what we'll still do then, Lord willing, is when we have a special service, we still got their contact information. And when we send a mailer out inviting everybody to come to our special day, they'll get a reminder that we're here, you know. And uh, we've seen people, you know, years later, they come back. And, you know, I don't remember this person. Oh, yeah, I came a couple years ago. And uh, you just never know. Uh, so that's about the extent that we want to do on follow-up, all right? Uh, other than that, we want to just keep praying for them. Uh, we're trying to get better at recording all their names and their information, and we've got a, uh, a binder in the other room. Uh, if anybody wants that, Miss uh, Joyce Martin was asking me, well, she was asking me about the new members, but she was saying, I want, you know, do we have these written down somewhere so I can know? Definitely we have it, and we can provide that to you. And so, uh, so you can have a list of those who have become members, those who've gotten saved, those who, uh, whatever. So, uh, but you continue to pray for them. We keep looking for them. You know, hopefully we can kind of remember. If you're praying for them, you're more likely to remember them. And, uh, and hopefully if they walk through the door, you'll say, I know you. I remember talking to you at your door, you know. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times I'm like, I know you from somewhere. <laughs> they have to remind me, right? But, uh, but if you're praying for them and you're looking for them, uh, then what a blessing. You can rejoice whenever they come in, all right? 
But here's why we don't want to keep going back and back and back and back and back, which we tend to do sometimes because we're like, well, we've got to get more people in church. And so what we'll say is, what about all these contacts we have? This is my, my feeling anyway. Let's just keep going back and hounding them and trying to get them to come. Well, sometimes hounding them is a bigger turnoff than anything. You know, and there's actually been people, I've heard stories of, I've never had it happen here, but I've heard stories where they've called churches and said, tell so-and-so to quit knocking on my door. <laughs> I'm not interested. <laughs> Leave me alone. And uh, we don't want that to ever happen. But not just that, we don't want to waste all of our soul winning time on follow-up visitation. Now you say, well, that's not a waste. Well, it's, it's not a waste if, 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 if you're investing in somebody and you're actually trying to help them grow. But if, it's, if you're never going to get through to them and they're never going to be discipled, I don't think that was Jesus's model. Jesus just kept on going. I got to go to the next city. If you're not going to follow me, you know, you're just going to have to be left behind. And he would go into the next city and keep doing the work. Paul, same way. He might go back, you know, a year later and see how everybody's doing. But he had, he had more doors to knock and more people to preach the gospel to. So we only have so many soul winning hours in a week that we can invest. And so we wanna use that to win souls. Uh, that's why I like the idea of mailing the, the follow-up packet. They can, it's almost like they're getting a visit from us without us necessarily going there. But then I do wanna make sure we get at least one visit where we, visit, we knock on their door again and say, hey, you know, just following up on you, see how you're doing, hope you come to church and, and uh, see if they need anything from you, whatever. Okay, because we want to go out and to keep winning more souls. Right. And again, if they come to the church, they're going to get discipled, you know, under the preaching and everything. But uh, we can't just expect that everybody wants to be discipled, though. That's just not the case. All right, well... That concludes the lesson. So anything else?